Okay, so this lesson is 8.3 wave characteristics, and this is where we're starting to get into some actual, maybe, math, um, looking at our waves. So we've got a picture here of, of a wave. looks like a sine wave or a cosine wave, so hopefully you've seen something that looks like this before. And um, for this, this unit on sound and waves, we're going to be dealing with waves a lot, and we need to understand some of the measures here. And so there are a bunch of different things we can describe about our waves. And there's two main ca categories here. There's geometric wave characteristics. Oop, I'll just um, undo that. So we have geometric wave characteristics here, and we have, um, oh, this second one should not say geometric. This one should say time-based. I'm sorry that they both say geometric. This is time-based wave characteristics. Okay, so that's important. We have those two categories there. So what does that mean? Well, for our geometric wave uh, characteristics, we're going to pretend that we're just freezing time. So we'll freeze time. So we're looking at, um, so look at one single instant. Okay, so if I look at my wave, and I'm just looking at it at a certain frame of time, I've frozen time, then I can look at my wave and I can describe some geometric characteristics of it. The first characteristic we have is called the amplitude, and this is the max distance from equilibrium. From equilibrium. And we have a f an equation for this. Amplitude is equal to max minus min divided by 2. You can see here in the picture our amplitude is this guy. It's basically half of the distance from the top to the bottom, or it's basically the, the height of our wave. That's the amplitude. And the wavelength is basically the length of the wave. So this is the distance distance between two similar points points in two cycles so for this we have units of meters generally so let's look at the wavelength here in this picture. We can see this is the wavelength. We call this lambda. And I'm just going to write that symbol over here. We have lambda. This is the Greek letter lambda. It looks sort of like a... I mean, it's, it's the equivalent of L, but it doesn't look too much like an L. Okay, so this is our wavelength. And you can see that it goes from the maximum here, the maximum of the function, and it goes all the way along the function here until we get to the next maximum. And that's where the function repeats again. So that's our wavelength. We can measure how long um, it takes for it to repeat. And we could do that with any other point. I could have picked the minimum and gone to the next point we get the minimum. I could also have picked this zero point at the start. But I would have to be careful because I, I go along, I get to another zero here. But the first one was zero going up. This is zero going down. So it's not the same. I need to keep on going until I find another zero going up. And this is where the function is repeating. You see that that's the same wavelength as if I went from max to max. Okay, so that's our wavelength. And we have two more here. Phase. Phase is the x-coordinate of a unique point. So phase is just saying where is it horizontally? Okay, and generally we'll, we don't talk about the phase of the whole function. We might say, okay, well, I've got my minimum here. What is the phase of my minimum? And I could say it's at 1.5 meters. Or I could also um, say it's at 3 quarters of the wavelength. And so there's sort of two ways of, of talking about your phase. You can talk about it in meters, or you can talk about it as, um, as just sort of a proportion of the whole wavelength. Okay, so I'll say here for the units, meters, 
or um, or let's say proportion. So I could say that the phase is 0 0.5. That just means half of the wavelength, half of the 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 whole length of the function. Okay, and phase shift. Finally, this is to go along with phase, we can talk about phase shift, which is to say how much it's shifted horizontally. So this is a shift in the x-axis relative to another value. And again, just like phase, our units could be meters, or it could be just a proportion. So again, we could say the phase shift is 0 0.5. That means it's shifted by half of the wavelength. So you can see in the, the picture above here, we have our one function, and then we have our second function here, and it has been shifted by a certain amount. We would say that the phase shift here, well, that looks like about one-third. So I'd say that the phase shift is about one-third of the whole wavelength. And hopefully you can see that, that we've shifted it right by one-third of the wavelength. Okay, so those are our geometric, um, those, those are our, our geometric measures. And the other set of measures that we have for a wave are the time-based measures. And this is where, where we look at one specific location. over time. So now if I unfreeze time, but I'm looking at just the position of a point on my, let's say it's on a string, the string is waving up and down, so I can say that this point on the string, maybe I have uh, my string is, is looking like this, and if I say here's a certain point on my string, and it's waving down and back up, and down and back up, and I'm curious at its position at a certain time. That's our time-based characteristics. So you can see here we have y, so we're talking about, in this case, let's say our, the y position over time. You can see that it would be waving up and down. So I can, I can measure that here. Um, it might make more sense to look at a maximum value and, and talk about its variation over time. But you could pick any point. Okay. So these are our time-based characteristics, and there's a couple a couple things that we like to look at here. The first one is period, and um, we use the symbol T for period, capital T. And this is the time for a vibrating particle for a vibrating particle to complete one cycle. one cycle. And we measure that in units of seconds. So this is our period. It's how long it takes for it to do one cycle. And you can see then in the picture, we've got our period here. We're saying that it starts at zero and it comes back to this zero point going up after that much time. So that's how long it took for it to do one full cycle. The frequency is sort of the opposite. So the symbol for this is f, lowercase f, and this is the number of cycles per second. The number of cycles per second. And frequency and period are related. You can see if period is how long it takes for one cycle, and frequency is the number of cycles per second, well, they're related this way. F is equal to 1 over T. The frequency is 1 over the period. And we have units of hertz. HZ, which is the same as saying 1 over S, one, o 1 per second. And the opposite of that equation is to say T is equal to 1 over F. That's just rearranging that equation for T. And again, we have units here of seconds. Okay, good. So just a couple more pieces here. If I want to know how fast my wave is traveling, 
Okay. Well, um, I need to combine my time-based characteristics and my um, position-based, my geometric characteristics. And so the way I can do that is I can say, I know how long a wavelength is, so when it does one full cycle, I know how far it travels. Let's say the wavelength is one meter. And if I know my period, then I know how long it takes for it to do one full cycle. So I can say it goes travels one meter in one cycle, and it takes, let's say, two seconds to do one cycle, then it's going to go one meter every two seconds, or, you know, 0 0.5 meters per second, that sort of thing. So we, have, we can calculate our wave speed here by saying v is equal to lambda over t, the wavelength over the period. Th that's because the wavelength is how far it travels in one cycle, and the period is how long it takes for one cycle. Now, um, our units, of course, for that are meters per second. And I can write that v equals lambda over t one other way. I can say, because t is 1 over f, so I can actually say v is equal to f lambda. And this is actually going to be a very important equation. We'll see that in the next lesson. And, um, and it has the same units, of course. This is our speed, v equals f lambda. OK. and. Um, Oops, that was actually, this was the equation, and I'm going to give you the, the, the little sentence here instead. So this is how fast a wave travels through a medium. And so I just reversed those two boxes, I'm sorry. Okay, and so that's the main thing. This lesson is just about looking at all these different characteristics of waves. There's one little last box here, which is um, just a separate comment to say that um, we're going to be looking a lot at what's called simple harmonic motion, or SHM. And this is any motion, any motion that repeats itself at regular intervals. Regular intervals. Oops. I'll just fix that there. Regular intervals. Okay, that's our simple harmonic motion. So anything that's going back and forth, it's got some period, this is our simple harmonic motion. Alright, give a try on that homework, and I hope it goes okay.